Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight on our news. Opposition leader Loretta Butler Turner slams the Christie administration over the country's recent economic downgrade. We've got that story straight ahead. The Central Bank of the Bahamas allays fears surrounding the recent Standard & Poor's downgrade. The FNM leader gives his views on those four new senators. That story straight ahead. The minister in charge of hurricane relief is responding to criticisms about the pace of hurricane restoration. That story is coming up straight ahead. Why a Freedom of Information Act is more important than ever for the Bahamas. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina McNeil. Topping news tonight, given this Christie administration has not been fiscally responsible with anything they've done, the country's downgrade to junk status by Standard & Poor's comes as no surprise. This according to leader of the official opposition, Loretta Butler Turner, who says the downgrade has created an ominous black cloud over Christmas. Dana Smith reports. The opposition leader said it's clear this delusional PLP government is living in the land of make-believe and she believes this S&P downgrade may be the first of a number of dominoes to fall. In a statement released last night, Butler Turner said the impact of this bleak and disastrous downgrade by S&P mere days before Christmas forebodes an ominous black cloud over our Christmas celebrations and harkens to a new year devoid of prosperity for our Bahamas. She told our news team today the downgrade should come as no surprise as the writing's been on the wall for quite some time. I'm on the record on more than one occasion of suggesting of stating emphatically that we were on the precipice of a disaster, that we were spiraling downward. And this is now what I had been looking to. Our debt ratio had grown, not decreased. Our labor force has contracted. We've been in recession for three years. All of the handwriting was on the wall that this is where we were heading unless drastic measures were taken. And so while I'm very disappointed that we've gotten to this point, I'm not surprised. Butler Turner said it's clear the government is not leveling with the Bahamian people on the true state of the economy and the government's finances. Pointing to the ramifications of this and any further economic downgrades, the opposition leader noted the cost of borrowing by the government could become dramatically more expensive. And this looming crisis, Butler Turner said, is solely the responsibility of the PLP and Prime Minister Perry Christie. She said the government has been reckless, wasteful, and massively incompetent in managing the the economy. One of the challenges that I have is the fact that the Prime Minister and um, his uh, band of merry cohorts for too long have continued to spend recklessly, have been unaccountable, have lacked transparency, and have continued to waste the public's money with no regard for um, what would have happened. Christie said yesterday it must be acknowledged that SMP in its report noted the downgrade is in part due to the impact and costs associated with Hurricanes Joaquin and Matthew. He said, quote, we're talking about a country that has been devastated not by the decisions of the government, but by the allowance of God. And in an official statement, the Bahamas government said it's of the view that SNP did not give appropriate weight to important developments on the ground. Well, Butler Turner branded the government's response to the downgrade delusional, stating it shows that a delusional government is living in a world of make-believe and fantasy, while the country is in a vicious downward spiral, with no plans to pull us out of our economic freefall. Mr. Christie, whether he wants to admit it or not, is the captain of this ship, and he has steered us straight into a major, major show. And... It matters not the advice that Mr. Christie has gotten, whether it's been good or bad. Mr. Christie ultimately has to make the decision, and he's made some very poor decisions. But Turner said the government must accept that its long on words and short on action policies are directly responsible for this latest economic bad news. And she questioned if this administration truly has a solution. This Christie government in addition to being inept, I think they have deluded themselves into thinking they could fool not just the Bahamian people, but also the international rating agencies into thinking they truly had a uh, fiscal policy that was workable 
that would have averted this very serious downgrade. Reporting for Our News, I'm Dana Smith. Well, the Prime Minister also addressing the recent downgrade at the groundbreaking of a new government complex at 8 Mile Rock, Grand Bahama, Thursday. Prime Minister Perry Christie said there's a silver lining in Standard & Poor's actions. He was referring to the credit agency saying that it would upgrade the Bahamas from a negative to stable investment grade. But he noted that S&P has the sense that the Bahamas may be too optimistic about Bahamar, which he says led to the credit agency to downgrade the country in the first place. Well, the most recent downgrade of the Bahamas to junk status by Standard & Poor's is just the latest example of the Christie administration's gross mishandling of the economy. That's according to leader of the United People's Movement, Greg Moss, who says the downgrade is troubling. I think it's the last in this line of messaging before we get to very critical changes. But it's essentially a message to, to the government of the Bahamas to say, you are not serious about, about fiscal order. S&P, which is the world's largest credit ratings agency, downgraded the country's sovereign credit rating to sub-investment grade level earlier this week. This is the fourth downgrade from a major ratings agency since the current Christie administration took office. Moss says it's clear that the government's current way of doing business is not working. You are spending recklessly, recklessly, and at the same time refusing to tax the people in the country who have the means of providing a, a, a fiscal, a steady fiscal base for the country. And at the same time giving away massive tax revenue, for instance in Grand Bahama with the Grand Bahama Investment Incentives Act 2016, we gave away a hundred million dollars in revenue per annum for 20 years. We gave away two billion. In a statement released on Monday, the government expressed its disappointment in the credit downgrade. Well, now the Central Bank of the Bahamas is allaying fears over the strength of the Bahamian dollar. According to a statement issued by the Central Bank, the recent downgrade of the Bahamas' sovereign credit to BB plus from BBB minus will not exert pressure on the sustainability of the Bahamas' fixed exchange rate regime. The bank says the Bahamian dollar remains supported by the Central Bank's external reserves, for which the outlook is stable to increase incrementally firming balances. Hotel sector capacity is expected to increase during 2017 and 2018, leading to enhanced net foreign exchange earning prospects. Meanwhile, the central bank also expects a steady, gradual improvement in, in the banking sector indicators as the economy recovers. The anticipated introduction of a credit bureau is expected to provide a sounder framework for prudent lending practices over the medium term. In other news, leader of the Free National Movement, Dr. Hubert Minnis, says the party is staying far away from what he calls the circus that has been created by opposition leader Loretta Butler Turner's recent senator picks. Dr. Minnis says those senators do not represent the FNM. Jasmine Brown reports. Minnis says Butler Turner's choice of senators are, quite frankly, the least of his concern. The FNM, we do not get involved in any side shows. We are a serious organization. We are a serious political party. DNA leader Branville McCartney was chosen to lead opposition business in the Senate, while Long Island fisherman Jude Knowles and former Senator Monique Gomez were chosen as senators. But it was Butler Turner's announcement that she selected community activist and talk show host Rodney Moncur as senator that shocked many. In the days since taking on the new post, Moncur has stirred controversy, clashing with Attorney General Allison Maynard Gibson in the Senate and prompting Butler Turner to issue an apology to a reporter for comments he made when questioned about his views on marital rape. Despite some of those senators being members of the Free National Movement, Minnis insisted they do not represent the party. They are not FNM senators. Get that straight. I am the leader of FNM. I selected none of them. They are not FNM senators. Brian McCartney is the leader in the Senate. I, I rest my case. Minnis went on to insist he and the FNM will be forging ahead to address issues plaguing the country, as he insists the drama in the Senate is not a concern for him. We are concerned with what is happening in this country. We are concerned with the level of unemployment. We are concerned about the ineffectiveness of the educational system. We are concerned about the crime that's occurring. And we are concerned more about the economy 
we certainly not concerned with any side show. That's our concern, the pain and suffering of the people. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Still to come on our news, the Hurricane Relief Coordinator defends relief efforts after Hurricane Matthew. How a Freedom of Information Act could impact the average Bahamian. And Bahamian artists get a chance to shine in a new competition. That's coming up when our news returns.